News, MJ Acosta. Thanks, Kay. And during his championship Wednesday press conference, Marcus Peters hoped to put this whole gumbo situation to rest. He said all the drama has gotten way out of context. And when he initially made those comments about Coach Sean Payton, he was just having a bad day. Since then, he says it's become more of internal banter, a joke. And in a moment of perfect comedic timing, it was Rams head coach Sean McVay who broke the ice and interrupted the press conference by shouting, let me get some of that soup from the back of the room. Everyone was laughing. And to that end, Peters said, that's exactly what he's been trying to say. Hey, man, my coach is a fiery coach. I'm a fiery player. We have fun with these things uh, internally. Uh, we're going to try to lead y'all to be the media, so y'all do what y'all going to do with it. But you did put it out on Twitter. Y'all do what y'all going to do with it. That's cool. I mean, yeah. Like I say, man, I got the utmost respect for the Saints and, 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 and their head coach and the organization, you know. Um, but things like that, man, I'm going to be ready to play just as much as they're going to be ready to play. We're trying to play a game. We ain't trying to talk about no gumbo. Right. We can talk about all that stuff afterwards. All that aside for a moment, Peter says that he's very confident in this Rams defense, especially with the addition of Aqib Talib this time around, who did not play against the Saints in Week 9. Defensive tackle and Dominican Sue says he'll provide some help as well. When he was asked about the whole gumbo situation, he says he'll only insert himself into that conversation by getting to breeze to stop him from throwing the ball okay mj great job by you guys it looks like marcus peters uh will make headlines once again after yesterday's press conference let's take a look back at this back and forth that he had at the podium how how would you evaluate your season uh i think we ain't done yet you but you personally i think we ain't done yet marcus so what you getting at? <laughs> Bart, let's start with you. Like that, What's going on with this, with Marcus Peters and his latest comments, and how do you feel about him this weekend? He's just a trippy guy, and I understand he's overconfident, and he, he was embarrassed. He was embarrassed because Tlaib was out, and, you know, he got he got the best of him. If I'm McVay, if I'm, if I'm Wade Phillips, I'm going to protect this kid from himself because he don't want that smoke, and he's a guy that's overly emotional, so he's a guy that can be baited. He can get out of his game. I'm saying, listen, we love you, but we brought a key to leave in here for this exact reason I get physical and I put him on Ted Ginn because he he's the lesser of the threat because Ted Ginn is a, is a deep guy and a gadget guy so I go that way because Marcus Peters is a guesser much like a player I remember at Delta O'Neill who Delta you, O'Neill right? Delta O'Neill. People, you remember Delta O'Neill would get 10 10 interceptions but you look up you give up 30 big plays right, sir. and you saw the big play where he gave up the 70 yards he's looking at the drop of a breeze and guessing the route you can't guess routes because everybody knows what type of player you are. So I'm going to protect the kid from himself, man. Send us, you go over there and get Ted Ginn. We need you to be big in the run game, big fella. Just cover Ted Ginn and don't even get involved with Mike Thomas, right? I mean, the Eagles, the first time they played him, they double team Mike Thomas, and he didn't do much, but everyone else did. Last week, they only went single coverage, and he, you can't stop Mike Thomas. So I, I don't blame Marcus Peters for getting burned like that, but I would hope that Wade Phillips has a different plan because that will not be acceptable. If Michael Thomas does what he did to the Eagles and what he did to the Rams last time, mm -hmm. over. Yep. Over. You have to find over. a way. It's over. Uh, got there's a difference between maybe a great ball hawk and truly a great cover corner. I right. think we'll find out this weekend which is which. And I think, Peter, you've talked all the time that Sean McVay is not a quarterback whisperer. He's not an offensive guru. He is a coach. And I think he's got a lot of managing in terms of the personality of this. MJ talked about it. Him making a cameo in the middle of Peter's uh, yep. press conference, sort of breaking the ice. Making How about that, soup? I don't know if that's uh, unintentional. He may know that I got a guy here who's emotional. I got to keep him where he needs to be. He can get some, you saw last week he was about to get a uh, a mm -hmm. personal file for just you know, talking with Cooper. I mean, he threw a flag in the stands. He's been ejected. Like he, he gets well, first of all, up, first, and that's fine. First of all, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Okay. Flag throwing, that's my thing. You, you did that? the flag bar? The first guy to ever do it. When oh, I went to you. Goodell's office, he was like, they, they was like, listen, we, we don't really know what to do because it's never been done, never been done before. So I, I was a trailblazer on it's that a one. Proud moment in for the show. Threw it in the in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the stadium, and I ran into the, the person that caught it. Okay. And then people want to give me a trial for the Orioles because I showed off my good arm. Oh, <laughs> Art, I didn't know that about you. Yes, the New England Patriots on their uh, keep, on their undefeated season. Keep learning. I'm sure you guys show. can find. I remember the Monday night game. That was it. I, were, I use hand warmers in the studio. Yeah, sure. How many of these do you think I would need at Arrowhead? Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. I'd have to make a jacket, a parka, and pants, and.